Hello, it's Nikki. Welcome. I am so glad that so many people around the world are enjoying this series. If you know somebody that might like it, or somebody is making a transition at the moment, or you, you yourself are making a transition and elevating your personal brand, um, yeah, send it to them. Welcome back. Uh, you are very welcome. All right, let's talk about your own version today. And this is about doing some work on what it is that you offer and not just focusing on how you want to deliver it but all of the elements that you can bring to the table and I feel like this is something an exercise we might have done um, when we did that record of achievement at school I don't know if you had it it was like a brown folder it looked like a wine list and all of the teachers were saying you've got to get this right you've got to absolutely get it set in stone otherwise you're never going to work again I mean they were saying all sorts of extreme things and it's just not true because then the internet arrived and then we can edit and change things as we go <clears throat> so the important thing here to say is that first and foremost is that you can edit as you go and you can embrace different parts of you, you can change, you can evolve, as long as you're clear, as long as you communicate really well, it's all groovy, it's all gravy, it's going to be good. So one of the things that I was worried about, and I say worried very loosely, um, when I was training to be a coach, um, it felt quite corporate, and it felt... Um, very put together and there would be people who almost uh, had the matching jacket, the matching top, the matching necklace and the pashmina and I was 30 at the time and I was not quite in pashmina territory at that stage. I'm not quite sure if I am now but I suddenly got worried and thought do I have to be that? Do I have to squeeze myself almost into that image? Do I have to start wearing a shift dress? Do I have to wear polite heels? And I felt a bit stumped by that moment. And maybe you have as well, where suddenly you're thinking, I'm going to have to become somebody else. And I tried it for a bit. Uh, I try. I mean, I didn't do the whole hog and got a whole new wardrobe. But it certainly took some refining because I was, I guess, preoccupied with trying to do things right or trying to do things in a way that people told me to do. And actually what I realized by doing this exercise of working out what I had to offer, what I'm all about, um, experience that I had had in other industries, in really focusing on all of those different areas, what I was able to do is to create something that was slightly different, as you will, we all want to be unique in this moment. So I didn't want to do a copy and paste version. I didn't want to, somebody to say like, oh, what you do is very similar to that person. And I'm not saying that I reinvented the wheel at all, but I just really tuned in and in a way turned up the dial again and again thinking, how can I make this feel more like me? Or what am I hiding here? What can I bring to the table? So one way I can give an example of is when I was supporting people with, in the coaching session, I might do, <laughs> it sounds really cringe when I say it like this, I promise I'm not, I'm not wearing like multiple hats or costumes or anything like that. But I sometimes do a bit of role play um, in terms of the way that I ask questions. And I, if somebody's saying like, this is what I charge um, and somebody's working on their money stuff, I might say, great, what do I get for that? And they're like, well, you get an hour session and it's this and it's that and I then might sometimes say can I have a discount and by asking those questions in a sort of real way allows people almost to see where their gaps are so the fact that I've got acting training has really helped I'm now a bit weirded out about using that role-playing situation but you know what I mean you know what the example is 
For example, if you are a social media strategist and you've worked, um, like I had a client a couple of weeks ago, she had worked in so many different organizations, big teams, small teams, um, large corporate firms. She'd done workshops. She'd worked with individuals on their strategy. She'd done so many different things. And one of the things that we were talking about was how important it was to embrace that. Now, this is why I am very clear in terms of my copy that it's not just coaching that you get. That's why I call it a strategy session because I bring all of these different pieces together. And so there will be some people who are like, just do traditional coaching and it's this and this is the way that I work. But my feeling is somebody might want something else as well. Somebody might want another piece of the pudding. So for example, with public speaking, I have a course called Speak Up and I've done many, many coaching sessions over the years about speaking up, about becoming visible, about really getting your brand out there. The fact that I am too a paid speaker, I can almost give people, um, almost like you're in Super Mario or something, like a little uh, a little lift, a little jump along the way. And if I can shortcut that process for somebody and say, actually, if you put this in the email, it's more likely for them to open or whatever it might be. So this is about really turning up the volume, the uh, brightness on your flavor. Because the more that you can do that, the more that you can step into this, the better it's going to be because you're going to be known for that thing. So I'm going to give another example, which is when I go to my yoga studio, I can choose from maybe, I would say between five and eight classes every day at this one particular studio. And because my schedule changes so much, I go at different times of the day or different days of the week. And I first and foremost look at a when I'm available, when the children are looked after, um, when I'm awake, etc., that eight o'clock class is never going to work for me, FYI. And then I think, how do I want to feel at the end of it? And there's one teacher who is absolutely brilliant. And I feel like she is the dental hygienist of yoga. She gets into all those nooks and crannies of your body. And she's really supportive my core strength because she's built all those little, she's built like I'm the finished article, not at all, but I've really reconnected, let's say, with all of those little nooks and crannies of my body. And then there are some classes like a yin class, for example, where I just want to go and reset my nervous system and relax before the week is beginning. So I will go on a Sunday tea time, for example. This is about really stepping into who you are so people recognize who you are. And they will come to you and become a match depending on what it is that you offer. If you're a bit generic, if you're a bit vanilla, um, it's going to be harder for somebody to decipher what you need. So this is about really thinking, okay, okay, um, if I do that, I'm really going to be able to support that person at this age and stage of their business or wherever they want to go. So that's number six for you today. I want you then to make changes on your website, in your bio, in maybe your packaging uh, copy, and really think about how can you do this more like me? And what might happen is you might read through something and go, oh yeah, it is a bit vague. It's it's not quite who I am in real life. So if you're getting any of those moments along the way, take the opportunity to say, okay, right, I'm now going to do X, Y, and Z. It will feel really great. Um, that's it for today. Um, enjoy, enjoy, and I will see you in part seven. <laughs>